Hello all of you fantastic viewers and welcome back to another video. Not too long ago on this channel I made a video on Google's Dream Booth. This is open source research on AI that they did and it's a really great technology for text to image generator AIs such as Stable Diffusion. It essentially allows you to take a series of photos of a person, pet, object, or even a style and generate new images based off of those old ones. So you could sort of think of it like a very complex version of image to image. You're basically training your own AI model based on whatever you want. In today's video, I have teamed up with OpenArt. This is a company that I have sponsored with before because they just released their own version of Dream Booth on the OpenArt website. And honestly, I think it's a really good version of Dream Booth. They call theirs Photo Booth and it has quite a lot of distinct capabilities that we will discuss today. In all honesty, I need to make a big Dream Booth video pretty soon covering all of the new different softwares and programs that have Dream Booth. I think for anyone who is a beginner in the AI art space and they want to use technology like Photo Booth, there really is no better place to get started. First, let's take a quick peek at some examples. Now, obviously, there is a model trained on me. That's what I did for this video. This is an AI generated image of me. It definitely looks a lot like me. You can definitely tell with the hair. It's got that uh, brown hair, the weird curliness going up front. I don't really have a very good hairstyle, let's be honest. Um, got those deep, horrible, sunken eyes that I am known for, I guess. Uh, and, you know, the, the bone structure of the face, skin color, or the tones, they all look pretty good. And the eye color is decently accurate. My eyes are a little bit more brown than this, but yeah, this is obviously me in some suit with, like, an intent look on my face. It looks pretty good, actually. It looks a decent amount like me, enough to be definitely passable as a good image. Let's take a look at another example here. Believe this is supposed to be me as Napoleon Bonaparte. Mm, okay, so this is an actual Napoleon painting, and then that's me. So you could definitely see some resemblance here in these two images. But yeah, that definitely looks a lot like me. The hair is pretty close. My hair would have to be pretty long to be like that. But nevertheless, it works. I think Napoleon was a, a bigger dude, so I've definitely gained a few pounds to fit the Napoleon role. And, you know, like I said, the skin tones, eye color, all that stuff, the bone structure of the face looks pretty good. It accurately looks a decent amount like me. This one, action movie hero, guys, come on, definitely fits me, like my personality, right? Like I'm an action hero kind of a, kind of a dude, right? Please say yes. This is a good generation. Uh, I definitely got the action hero face going on. I've, I've, I'm trying to make like a facial expression. It's pretty accurate. I'm just like swagger walking away. We've also got some more horrifying stuff. This is me if I was an evil demon clown. I mean, this is just absolutely horrific, but you know, I, I do wear red sweatshirts from time to time. The hair is actually very accurate in this. Again, the face shape, um, but yeah, I would be possessed and this is just terrifying. All right, viewers, so here we are on the Open Art website. This is the main page. To get started with Photo Booth, it really is very simple. They've got the big Open Art Photo Booth button right here in the middle of the page, and you just want to click it. So there's a few different aspects of Open Art's Photo Booth that differentiate it from other websites using Dream Booth and incorporating Dream Booth. They've really tried to make the process as seamless and simple as possible. As you can see, they have a ton of different examples here. I just showed you guys some really good ones of a very attractive guy, so I don't think you need to see any of these examples. But we do have, like, Ryan Reynolds, a pooch over here. And of course, if you've already been making AI models with Photo Booth, you will be able to easily access them on this page by clicking on My AI Models. Of course, I already have been generating with this, but we'll go through the new process. You'll actually be able to see some options. I want to create photos for a person, pet, character, art style, object, or others. So Open Art has taken great care into streamlining the whole Dream Booth process. If you're doing yourself or a friend or family member with consent, guys, remember, you gotta get consent from your friends and family to do stuff like this. Then you would obviously click on the person category. If it's your pet, obviously your hamster, your pet squid, you know, you can pick the pet category. And obviously the possibilities are going to be endless with these. You can have your pet as a pirate. Your pet might be driving a Mercedes down the highway. Then they also have the characters. This is very interesting. I think this could be really, really big, especially in some tight-knit communities out there in the internet. You can use AI to bring those characters to life and see them in different scenes. 
So let's say you can't really generate with any AI art generators a good generation of, you know, an oddly specific character from a video game or something. You can train a Dream Booth model on that character and then use them to create whatever fan art you want. This one is very interesting. Art style. Want to generate images consistently in one art style. You can teach the AI the art style and have it draw in that style for you. Obviously, this has insane implications. You can train it on your very own art style, which I've seen people do before, and it will work shockingly well at capturing a specific art style. The example they show off here is pixel art, which is very telling. I can see the pixel art one being very useful if you're trying to create a video game or something, and you need all of the items to sort of match each other and be around the same pixel art size, if you know what I mean. You can train your very own pixel art style. Then they have specific objects, this would be like if a company is selling a product, and then others, this is if you have any miscellaneous ideas, I think these are very, very covering of mostly everything anyone would want to do with this. So the example I'll use, I'll just click on the person category here. Now the first preset package that you pick here is going to be completely free. That's the first thing you'll notice. And you might ask, what is a preset package? I have no idea what you're talking about. Good question. They have their own preset package store. Some of you more advanced users might not be interested in this, but anyone looking to just get into photo booth, generating AI art images of yourself, friends, family, pets, this could be extremely useful. They have the holiday vibes, male Avengers characters, female Avengers characters, TV characters for both genders, tons of different stuff for pets in movies, pets in professional scenarios, pet activities. So they have all these preset packages which are five bucks right now on the store a piece. And you know, they range from anywhere to 80 photos generated automatically when you apply them to your model to some of these have 112 photos. And they have categories here that you can sort by as well. You don't have to select one of these preset packages, but they will benefit your models. And you can add as many of them as you want to the store, but your first one is completely free like they say in here. Now, if you choose not to apply a preset package, that's no problem. You can still fully train a model on yourself and engineer your own prompts. And when you purchase a model, you get 400 images free that come with the model. So you can do 400 generations of yourself. And right now, with the in model training beta, that is going to be 10 bucks. And of course, checkout is pretty simple here. You can do either Google Pay or just your credit card. And it's powered by Stripe, so I would say Stripe is pretty reliable. Once you purchase it, you'll find it under the My Models section here in Photo Booth. As you can see, I already got these two models here, one of me and one of my dog. And you can begin to select a model, and this is how you begin to create them. So obviously, you're going to want to pick a name for the model. This can be whatever you want, it has no effect on the model. We're actually going to go with a character to generate for this. Lemon character. So I've got this big folder of all of these lemon generations I've collected over time. We've got about 29 images in total, which is around what you want. You want around 20 to 30 images when you generate with OpenArts Photo Booth to train Photo Booth on. This is going to be somewhere in between a character and an art style here. We've got a bunch of these different lemon images and we're going to see what it produces. We're going to make a lemon model because that's really what you're doing is you're creating your very own AI model with this stuff. But obviously, you know, if you're doing your pet, you're doing yourself, you're going to have a bunch of images of yourself. They have very different guidelines for each category. If you're going to do yourself, you want 20 to 30 photos, 15 close-up portrait photos of your face, three photos of half your body chest up, two photos of your full body, the person should be in the center of each photo. If you don't have many existing photos, you can use your phone to take some at home, but make sure they're in different places around your house, different shirts and clothing are ideal as well, and diversity is very important. And they've got some, obviously, don'ts here. No other people, no nudes, and your model is going to be deleted after one month of being created because of privacy. And you know, they have their own guidelines for a pet or a specific character. And again, mine isn't really gonna follow the character guidelines specifically. It's gonna be somewhere between an art style and a character, but it should be fun no matter what. And I think we're gonna get some fun images. Uploading your images is super easy. Just go on your computer. And I believe you can also do this from your phone as well. 
highlight or select all of the images you want to be in the model and drag them right in. And you can delete any from here if you would like as well, if you find some you don't really want. And even if we have uploaded a bunch of images to train on, we can't start training yet because we still have some fields we need to fill out. So obviously we gave it a name here, but we need an identifier. This is going to be a simple word or token that represents your training object. I'm just going to use lem to identify it. And then the class, this is more important than the identifier. If you're training a model on yourself and you're a man, you're going to want to put man in. If you're a woman, you're going to want to put woman in. If it's your dog, you're going to want to put dog in, or maybe your specific dog breed, or cat if it's your cat, whatever the object might be. Since we're doing a lemon character, I'm going to put lemon character into the prompt. And I'll add wearing sunglasses. And now that we have uploaded all of our photos and applied these, we can click on the start training button. So now my training request is submitted as you guys can see over here. You receive an email once it's done and it takes anywhere from 30 minutes to 90 minutes. In the meantime, we can explore these two other models that I made. We'll look at the one of myself. Here are the training images that I used. You can see it in the tutorial I made for open art on how to set all of this up. As you can see, there's a bunch of preset packages applied here to my model of myself. This is an anime and art one, and they're coming out pretty decent, I would say. Some of these are a little bit more on the lower resolution side, of course. However, OpenArt has built in something for this, which I really, really like to see. For one image credit or two image credits, you can have some different upscaling options. So we've got a two times resolution option, two times plus face restoration, four times resolution, four times plus face restoration, and four times plus anime. This just happens to be an anime image. So let's try the four times and anime. And that did really quickly, actually. A pretty decent upscale job on this image of me, and it doesn't look too bad, I think definitely resembles me. Taking a look around here, we've also got me as Superman. And again, the face isn't actually too bad on this generation. Definitely got the nice Superman logo. It did a great job with that, but we're going to do a nice four times and face enhancement on this one. And yeah, pretty quickly there, we got a better result for sure. The face enhancement did a decent job on the eyes, I think. It's a still a little bit weird, but not too bad. The hair looks really, really good, and the rest of the face and everything looks decent. And of course, you can go ahead and swamp between the different upscales if you want to see the direct comparison between them. Some more anime cherry blossoms. And the upscaler honestly handled the cherry blossoms pretty well in the scenario. The face is still a little lackluster. The art presets are pretty cool as well. Got some cool oil painting-esque stuff. Pretty interesting results to say the least. This one actually came out pretty decent as well. We'll do some upscaling and face enhancement on this. And wow, this turned out pretty good, especially the eyes here. The eyes look great in this generation, I think. Nice little artistic portrait of me. There's also some more abstract stuff that we can view in here. Again, this is the anime and art painting with drops preset pack. So this is more artistic stuff. It comes out pretty cool, I think. Pretty, pretty realistic. I really like the lighting in this imagery here. Let's say I wanted to generate more of these. It's really easy to regenerate with the preset. You just click on the generate eight more button. And I also have me as a priest here. This is me as Steve Jobs holding a picture of my face, which uh, that's pretty hilarious. And uh, this is me behind bars in jail. I love this picture of me with the horse. Uh, as you can see, we're just inside of a house and I'm like, yo, look at my horse. We're clearly best friends in this. So yeah, the possibilities are truly endless. And like I said, I also trained them on my dog and these turned out really well. Some of them were cute, but also kind of disturbing. Like this one right here. I mean, he looks like he wants something from you for sure. I don't know what that is. It might be your soul. He, he might want your soul. This is my dog as Indiana Jones, shockingly good. Captain Jack Sparrow, also not too bad. I love this variation of my dog, but this one actually turned out really, really realistic, I think, as the, the generation in terms of, like, the photorealism. And also the cartoon character stuff looks really good as well. Doing a quick upscale on this, it's really fun to turn your dog into a cartoon character. So the lemon photos here have been generated from the lemon model, and I have to say it actually turned out pretty good. I did a bunch of different prompts. This one was of the lemon character surfing, and we got a few really good ones like this. And the upscaler actually works pretty well on these as well. This one honestly was pretty good as well. Very happy with this result. 
And again, the upscaler is doing a pretty decent job. This is a cyberpunk lemon mascot. Look at this one. Really not too bad here at all. It's got like these weird detailed sunglasses, a lemon head character. He looks all strange. Really, really coherent image. And again, just some more coherent imagery here. Got the full sunglasses, the lemon body. Cowboy hat lemons actually came out really, really fantastic as well. He's wearing a pretty coherent lemon cowboy hat. It is definitely able to capture every aspect of the lemon character and put him in different scenarios. And I think it actually served its purpose pretty well at the end of the day. And honestly, you'd be hard pressed to generate any lemon characters in base stable diffusion that look as good as the ones you're seeing now from this custom pre-trained model. And again, this guy looking a little on the creepy side here. I don't know if I'd want to do business with him, but he's definitely a coherent looking image generated. At the end of the day, this is definitely some really, really cool tech. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching this video. Be sure to check out Open Arts Photo Booth with the link in the description below. Check out my Discord to join the community. We've got a ton of great resources on the Discord for you all. Lots of free AI on there. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out some of the other videos. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.